present. Thank you. So uh, for those who are uh, tuning in, we um, at our last meeting, which was last Wednesday, uh, the school committee conducted interviews with three finalist candidates, uh, Mr. Lee, Mr. Johnson, and Ms. Farkas. Um, those deliberations were then continued by a vote of the school committee to this evening uh, to allow a chance for school committee members uh, to both think about uh, the interviews but also to take feedback from the public um, on those interviews that were conducted. Uh, so we are essentially back where we left off um, and I would open the floor for um, deliberations to continue the deliberations that began uh, last Wednesday. <clears throat> Ms. Duvall. Um, <clears throat> I would like to start out for um, saying that I'd like to, I'm grateful that we took the time to um, make the decision tonight and, and I received an awful lot of correspondence from the community and teachers and the alt and I want to thank everybody that I haven't gotten a chance to write back. Thank you very much for your input. It's very valued and import, important to me. Um, I just want to state that I kind of feel bad about the process only because right from the very beginning I have felt that we need someone who has experience whether it be assistant superintendent or superintendent experience because of our district and I've stated that all the way along and I think that we need to open up the search again um, although we had wonderful candidates and we really did have wonderful candidates I just none of them had previous experience and that's all I can really look at and we need to have somebody that can hit <coughs> our district running and know what the job entails and even as an assistant superintendent and I think also that that means that we need to increase the salary if, if that's um, necessary so I wanted to just take the time to say thank you to the candidates um, I apologize that um, I believe that we need more experience and that they didn't fall into that category in the first place and I didn't want to spend any of their time but I think they're going to make wonderful superintendents someday just not right now with us that's my opinion and if it's appropriate I'd like to make a motion to open it in spring but if not we can discuss it more I'm not sure of your protocol well I think Thank you. it would be helpful if we allowed for some more deliberate for allowed for mm -hmm. more comments to hear from other folks if that's okay and then we can just so um, do other people have any comments that they want to add about uh, about the candidates about the deliberative process etc sure. I'll go I, I have a feeling I'm going to be in a real minority tonight so I'll, I'll make my comments before I don't have the chance I actually think that there is a candidate that I would be comfortable putting forward um, it's interesting we had we had three you know very smart people come before us I don't feel badly about I don't feel like we have anything to apologize for I think this is what the process is um, I don't feel that we should only look at people who have been superintendents I, I, I think that is going to be limiting for us but I, I'd like to say something about each about each candidate and and what my my feelings are um, and I have um, the perspective of sitting with them through both interviews um, is there anything we can do to correct this feedback <laughs> oh yeah it's ringing in my ear Sorry. <laughs> thank you um, so Ed and I are the only two sitting at the table who have the um, the perspective of, of sitting through both rounds of interviews and um, actually I, there were some differences between them and, and I just want to speak to that a little bit so um, for, for um, Timothy Lee who came to us in general if, um, I thought he had the most thorough answers um, and and well-versed answers to all of our questions in both interviews I think he's extremely smart I think he knows a lot about Massachusetts policies and standards and laws and um, um, is certainly very invested in education he's he has taught in middle school and high school he doesn't have a lot of experience at high school he's been in elementary school for the last 15 years um, I think that um, I was really impressed with his answers particularly around his entry plan and um, when he spoke at, at the first round of interviews it was stunning to me how how thorough and um, broad-based his answers were. Um, I, I was really very, very taken with him. 
Um, I thought that he interviewed better the first time around than he did the second time around. He made a comment at the end of his interview where he said that this would be a very big leap for him, that it would be a real stretch for uh, his skill set, but he felt he was up to the job. And I, I, I agree. I think it would be a very big leap. I think it's just too big of a leap for him. I think he's going to be a great, I think he's a great candidate for a superintendent in a smaller district or an associate superintendent. I think that he'd be a good candidate here someday. I really liked him a lot. I think that he was, um, I, w I was really very impressed with him, but I really don't think that he's ready for this level of a of, of job yet. Um, in our, with our internal candidate, Lori Fargus, there's absolutely no doubt whatsoever she is expert in her field of special education. I mean, that, that's just very clear and very clear that she knows. We're still getting a lot of feedback here. Okay, I'm and I don't know if you hear it back there, but I, I don't. Oh. Um, I think she's, she's very expert in her field. I think that she knows, um, you know, the needs of the, the special needs populations inside out and backwards. I think that she's a really good decision maker. Um, what I was struck by in two rounds of interviews is how much of her responses were focused on special, special needs populations. I would have liked to have heard more about kind of the general population. And I was struck when Alden asked her during the interview, she, she was, in both interviews she said one of the things that she really wanted to do is go out into the larger community and talk about who the student body is and educate the community more, which I think is a very good idea. But Alden asked, you know, who is it that you want to educate them about? And it was, a, it was very focused on, on special education. And yes, I want a superintendent who can come in and really know that population and work with them and help meet their needs. But I also want to know that we have somebody who is going to have the entire student body special purpose. So that, that was a detractor for me. Um, I would support John Johnson as a candidate. And I think for people who are supporting a candidate rather than asking us to go out for a search, I think that there were more people supporting um, him in general. I think that um, when he, f during the first interview, I was incredibly impressed with how, um, how much homework he had done and how much he had already gotten to learn about the district. I think he's a, an incredibly intelligent person who really knows an enormous amount about educational policy and curriculum and regulations. And even though he's been in Wisconsin for a long time, there's no doubt in my mind that he could learn what he needs to kn know about the differences between Wisconsin law and Massachusetts law before he got here. Um, I think that he, uh, he has taught in elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, I know people are really concerned about his lack of administrative experience in a school. He was an assistant principal in a large high school, and then he moved to the state level. Um, and he had, um, it, he's had very broad experience at the state level. He certainly would be comfortable going to, in, you know, advocating for us at the state level here. Um, he has supervisory experience there. One of his references spoke to, you know, what a strong supervi supervisor he is and what a collaborative um, uh, team leader he is. Um, I think that he would, he, he would, um, um, can be very comfortable coming in here and um, learning about our district. I think he spoke well about his, about his idea of, a, of an entry plan. I really liked the way he talked about, um, the superintendent as a visionary who, you know, he needs to be working on the nuts and bolts, but also keep the big picture in mind. One, one of my favorite quotes from his last interview was when he was talking um, about vision. He said, you know, the, the common core does not replace the art of teaching. I really liked that quote because I think that he understands the curriculum and, <coughs> and all of the requirements, but um, hasn't lost sight of what it, what it means to be the teacher in front of a classroom and, and work for the students and the staff. I like the way he spoke about his trajectory and in, in his in his work life. Um, I think that he's very personable. I think that he would he would come here and stay. He spoke about that in both interviews. How he thinks it's important for somebody to come and be here for for a while. Um, he got really strong positive um, responses from the community, um, and um, I, I would also share and I have permission to share that um, one of the references that he had was our former superintendent, Brian Salzer, who wrote to me on his behalf. And I don't think that Brian um, would write this if he didn't feel it strongly. And it just meant something to me that he knew this person and knows our district. And he said, this is a quality, in quotes, this is a quality candidate and would do a great job. I respect him. 
um, a lot and think that he would be a great intellectual and instructional leader for the district. His integrity and work ethic are superb. Um, so I know that there are a lot of people who think that we need to go out and do another search. I'm guessing that I'm in the minority, but I just wanted to say that I would support John Johnson in asking him to be superintendent in Northampton. Okay. Are there any other uh, comments that people want to make or reflections on the interviews uh, or any of the feedback that they received? <coughs> yeah, I've been uh, struck by this sort of question of you know what sort of experience in the job of superintendent do we want and I think um, for a couple of reasons I think we shouldn't make that be a disqualification not having experience as a superintendent uh, for what the one reason obviously is that it wasn't in our posting um, and at the time to have that discussion of whether or not we wanted it to be an absolute requirement as opposed to a, a good <coughs> thing um, would have been in the posting but I think the reason it wasn't in the posting, and, I th and the reason I don't think it should be in the posting in the future, actually, is um, that I think, well, you know, th th if somebody has been hired as a superintendent before, that tells you, one, that somebody else thought that they could be a superintendent, so it tends to sort of bolster the notion. It also gives you some sort of a track record to go on. And um, hopefully they've learned some things while they were there that they could apply here. The reason I don't think it's essential that they have had that experience is I think we can have most of the same characteristics, <coughs> knowing how to operate an organization, you know, being good at hiring people and supervising them, um, doing outreach to the community, you know, all those, all those complicated things that we want a superintendent to do um, that are in the rest of our posting uh, about the position. You can have those without having been a superintendent. And whether or not you have been a superintendent, I think you have an enormous learning curve when you come into this job uh, in terms of you have to actually get to know all the people who you're working with because they're already in place. Um, and um, I think that's, that's a huge piece that's going to happen regardless of your prior experience. So, and I think that's actually a bigger thing in many ways than experience is whether or not you're the person has the capacity to do that, to be able to come into a situation like this and work with all of the, all of the various constituents, all the context that's already in place. Um, and while previous experience as superintendent would indicate that they might be able to do that, <coughs> that there's no guarantee of it, nor is it, I think, um, the only way you can guarantee it. So, so that's my general comment about that question. Um, more specifically, I think when I when I've been looking at the candidates, um, I, I'm not I'm not quite so sure I'm so far as going to support John Johnson, but I think I'd be really open to, to him being hired. Um, when I looked at the the things that he has had experience with, he's had experience with um, with hiring processes. Uh, with um, when he was an assistant principal. He's had experience in the whole political realm, which I think is really vital and one that we've often overlooked in this particular job and one that repeatedly comes up as something we need to do in terms of our outreach both to, our, to the Northampton community but also to the, at the level of the state government. Um, so that's why I'd certainly be really open to him. Mr. Bourne, you had your hand up? Yeah, I was just going to talk about whether, um, I, I guess we've talked about this a bit before, but whether a candidate needs to have uh, superintendent <coughs> experience. I mean, it kind of comes back to this issue that I think we'll discuss tonight about salary. But I think this, this is in part an issue for um, the selection committee. And I think you may have somebody who's a rising star who's had central office experience but hasn't been a superintendent. And that that may be more important than someone who's had superintendent experience but isn't an exceptional leader. So. I would leave it up to the selection committee and maybe look for central office experience. But don't, I mean, I think we're going to have a hard time finding somebody who's incredible, who's been a superintendent somewhere with the salary where the range we're looking at. So I would just like to have a little flexibility. I think it makes sense. Other comments? I just wanted to say something real quick. Um, we're not going to have a guarantee on anybody. But we have a better chance of, of somebody who has who has had experience, and the reason is, 
I've spoken with people who are leaders and asked them, um, and not just leaders in the education. I spoke with when we went to the um, hospital the other day and we were there and we talked to the man, the director of health, I believe it was, and I asked him, and, and, and just the idea of a leader, and there's so much involved. Um, Regina did seem to come, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Nash did seem to come in and seamlessly assimilate into the job as superintendent. Um, I think that it matters that somebody gets up and knows what they're going to do that day. Um, they do have wonderful experience. I used to hire. I'm not at all qualified to be a superintendent just because I hired. Um, that's what I wanted to say, that th there's an incredible learning curve when you come into this job. Not necessarily, not if you already know the job. Dr. Nash didn't seem to have an incredible learning curve, and she seemed to take over and Brian didn't, um, the previous superintendent didn't really do much. I mean, he just, she just came in and has been doing a wonderful job ever since. And I'd like somebody who does a wonderful job, and yes, it may cost more money, but we have to decide what's important. And although it's not a guarantee, Brian Salzer was a wonderful superintendent, but he did leave us. Um, I think we, that we should just, I mean, we have an opportunity now to set everything up the best that we can to get the best person for the job. So that's what I wanted to add to that. I know I just wanted us to be clear we wanted to stay on the, the current um, process that we're involved in right now before we um, speculate on any other process so um, so I guess are there any other members that wish to uh, speak about the uh, about the candidates or about the, the process before us yeah. mr. Flint <clears throat> I think um, first I'd just like to say that I appreciate all the feedback that we got from constituents we had lots of people email call, catch us at the grocery store, um, anything. Uh, and it's really nice to actually get that uh, in this position. I know sometimes we have issues come up and we just wonder if, um, if people are hearing it or words getting out, but I felt, I felt like I heard from a, a really large number of constituents. And um, I think we all recognize that the three professionals that we interviewed uh, are all really good at what they do. Um, they, uh, they have the skills. Uh, to be educational leaders, and I think it's really impressive that they um, they have that dedication, they they have that drive and that interest of students, and they are looking to move in this profession and to to take on a bigger leadership role. Um, that being said, I don't know that I I felt or um, many of the people I've spoken to feel that they are ready for for this position, and I think we. Uh, we're a unique district in a way that there's there's a lot of needs here, and um, the job of superintendent at Northampton Public Schools is is one that's that's requires, I think, a, a level of leadership that I don't know I saw conveyed in in the three candidates that we saw, and uh, and so I, I'm just I guess I'm going to say that I I'm probably going to be on the side to to push to reopen the search. Um, but that doesn't reflect necessarily that, um, I think, negatively on any of the three candidates. I think they're exceptional school leaders. I just feel like um, I think we, we need a little bit more. Okay. Are there other uh, folks who wish to add any comments? Oh, I'd go. Mr. Zahowski and Ms. Dwell. I th I th yeah, that's fine. I think what I heard um, tonight from everyone is, is, is accurate and what I experienced myself, having sat with Ms. Pick on the screening committee um, and had being part of um, the, the group that brought the three candidates forward, um, I would say that what Ms. Pick said was, was accurate. Uh, the interviews that I first saw with those three candidates um, certainly um, piqued my curiosity enough to want them to come forward as a finalist and to share them with everyone at the table so that they could get to meet them too. I think um, what they experienced throughout the day going through the district and being actively involved in our community and our schools uh, took a toll on them to a certain extent. Uh, we got to see them coming in. Um, although after maybe a day of work or uh, travel, they were a bit more fresh, I would say, compared to what I saw last Wednesday night. Um, the, um, the polishedness to their responses, the energy in which they conveyed the information of, uh, about the answers to the questions. Um, 
I thought w was better the first time. Um, and so I didn't find myself being as excited the second time listening to. I was really looking forward to hearing a, um, a furthering of the discussion that we started the first time. And I guess I really didn't hear that as loud and clear as I, I had expected. And, and I think for me, it was, um, it was good for me to hear that because it, it allowed me also to, to pause and to, um, to ponder a little bit more um, the selection that we have in front of us, which is to hire a full-time superintendent who um, will be the one that will look to, to, to move us forward and to make key decisions within our district um, for an, an undetermined amount of time, hopefully. And so, um, although I, I was um, impressed with each one of them, and as I heard many of us say tonight, they have strong skill sets and they're very talented educational leaders. Um, I too find myself at this point not ready to um, support any one of them at this time to move anyone forward, but um, although um, they will be, I'm sure, someday or maybe in the in the near future, an educational leader at the, the level in which they, they aspire to as a superintendent, uh, I think at this time, um, I'm not ready to, to support moving one forward as a finalist here as our superintendent. Okay. Ms. Minnick, did you want to say anything? Yes. I think, I think um, if I had to choose, I probably would be with Stephanie and say that John Johnson of the three of them seems like the best candidate. However, I think I tend to agree with uh, what I think is the consensus of the majority of the board that we probably don't have the perfect candidate sitting in front of us yet and that we might be wise to go out and look again. But what I do want to say is I very much do appreciate the input that we've received from a lot of people that know what they're talking about and who have interesting viewpoints on the district. But I also think that um, as school committee members, we've been elected to make a decision about some things and entrusted with knowing what's right and doing what's right and making a decision on behalf of a lot of people. And I'm always conscious that when we get input from constituents, that there's a, another large group of people that hasn't weighed in and that for whom, if, from whom we haven't gotten input and whose minds we don't know. But I think that considering that there are people that I haven't heard from in addition to the people that I have heard from, I still find myself in the same place. So this is not a decision. I just, I, I guess I want to be clear that while I very much value the input that people give us, this is not a decision that I would have come to based solely on the fact that we've received input from a variety of people suggesting that we reopen the search. This is really my own decision. Looking at the three candidates that we have, I feel, as Mike said, that they are all committed and talented educators and people with strengths that who, who will probably do a good job in a variety of positions and maybe even be a good superintendent someday, but I really feel like it's not here, not us, not now. Uh, Lisa, uh, Ms. Minnick brought up a good point. Um, uh, it is our decision, but we also re did receive, um, I received five, I believe five from the administrative leadership team and I do respect them and we've been in that position and not one of them felt that now was the time either um, or to, for different reasons, well mostly not, but somewhat different reasons I guess, just that we didn't have the right person was their consensus. And there wasn't one person from, um, who does quote know what they're talking about in that position who, who said, hey, this is it, we've got it, you've nailed it. And I think that we need, we really just need to make sure that we get, <coughs> no matter what it takes, the right person for the job and in the long run, we'll all be, we'll make everyone's life a lot easier and a better school district and we'll get out of level three and fairies and everything. Okay. Ms. Peck. So, um, just, 
I'm not going to see where this is going, but I'm going to make my comment anyway. Um, I, um, I really as, as, um, appreciate, again, all the comments that we've gotten, but especially from our administrators, whom I, I have a lot of respect for. I think that they have been under the leadership of an experienced superintendent these last couple of months, and they're really appreciating it. So that's a backhanded compliment to, to Dr. Nash. Um, but, you know, we're hearing from them how much they are really appreciating her leadership and are saying, well, th this is the difference of having somebody really experienced, in, and they, they want that. I can't blame them for wanting that. Um, on the other hand, I also had had several conversations with, um, with Joe Wood, our NASDAQ facilitator, who is I think that he's kind of surprised um, that the that the committee is leaning toward reopening um, because I think he thinks that we have good candidates in front of us to choose from um, and you know, he re he um, asked to, you know, to me to remind us that because we go out in the spring again doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get exactly what we're looking for um, yes there will be more people to to um, look at, uh, and there will be more people looking at them. Um, if we do go out in the spring I, and you're looking for somebody with more, exp I won't be part of that search, I won't be on the committee, um, but um, I think you're going to have to talk about increasing the salary um, because I don't think that you're going to get somebody with more experience for what we're offering. Mr. Bourne. I'm just going to say, with all due respect to NASDAQ, they have a vested interest in us not going out for another search in the spring. I, I understand right? that. So I just want to say that. Can, can I just? Sure. I understand that, and just so, so that people understand. So they are not getting paid for this search because that we were still under a guarantee, but it uh, does, that doesn't affect Joe in particular. Um, but I'm saying they, they would rather have us have this settled now and not be having to fight for their resources in the spring when they're going to be hopefully conducting other searches. That's all I'm saying. So um, I guess I want to, uh, this has been a good discussion, I want to kind of bring us back to the issue that we have to decide tonight, which is really about uh, the three candidates that have been presented to us. Um, so really at issue uh, would be a motion to bring any one of the three candidates or any combination of the three candidates forward or mm -hmm. a motion not to, uh, not to select one of the three finalists. Um, that's really what the decision point is for tonight. Um, any decision about beyond that, we really need to schedule a separate meeting to talk about any of those kinds of issues. But that's all hypothetical at this point. Right before us tonight is this issue of the three uh, professionals that we've interviewed as finalists and what decision we make on their candidacy. So I guess if hearing no other discussion, I would open the floor for a motion or motions. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we um, thank the candidates and resume the search in the spring. And um, okay. is that enough? So the so just the, so I understand the, that your motion would be that uh, we do not select uh, any of the three <coughs> finalists. Correct. Okay. Okay. And that we will discuss the. We re-examine it in the future, but yes. Okay. So there's a motion made. Uh, not to select uh, either of the any of the three candidates um, before us. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Okay. Is there any discussion or debate about that particular motion, M Mr. Meyer? I don't have a particular laundry list. Um, whether it's superintendent experience, I think that or even central office experience. I think that Mr. Burns made an excellent point that a undistinguished superintendent, and there are quite a few in the Commonwealth, um, it might not be the best of the district. Um, someone, Congress, who has no superintendent experience or no central office experience might be an extraordinary candidate. Um, looking at these three candidates, they came to us with very different courses in their careers. And they're all excellent. The particular combination of experiences and views and qualities were not such that I would choose one of these, fully recognizing that there are no guarantees going forward. 
um, the thought that we're not choosing these candidates because the perfect candidate awaits around the corner um, is not one to hold. And I also keep in mind the fact that even if we find that perfect candidate, that the median tenure of superintendents in the Commonwealth is something on the order of three years. So it's, I think we're doing our very best to find someone, um, and I think we also, going forward, have to think about retaining that person when we actually bring them to the district. Any other discussion <coughs> or comments about the motion, Mrs. Minnick? I just wanted to reiterate what Ms. Duvall said, which is that we are very grateful to these three candidates for putting themselves out there um, and, and spending the time with us and being willing to come here and interested in our district and for, the, for all of the work that they did to get through that process. Um, I recognize that in some cases doing this puts you at some, at some risk in your current employment in some cases and so I just I want to say that despite the fact that we are not select that we may not be selecting one of them tonight I do appreciate their willingness to engage with us any other comments okay hearing none of the motion before you is one to uh, not select uh, uh, any of the three uh, superintendent finalists uh, as part of this uh, process. Um, and I would actually ask the clerk to call the roll on this. Ms. Budaval? Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I'm not going to select it. <laughs> uh, Mr. Michael Flynn? Yes. Mr. Dan Meyer? Aye. Ms. Lisa Minnick? Yes. Mr. Howard Moore? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Ms. Stephanie Pick? No. Mr. Andrew Shelfo? Yes. Mr. Ed Zahowski? Yes. Mr. Alden Bourne? Yes. And Mayor David Narkowitz? Yes. The motion is passed. Okay, so the motion carries. Um, so uh, that, uh, that concludes the, uh, the, 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 the scheduled uh, part of our meeting for this evening, the, the scheduled process. Uh, and what I was going to say was um, what I would hope that we would take the next couple of weeks um, to um, allow us to regroup, allow the chair and the vice chair to work with the superintendent and on our next scheduled meeting, which I believe is November 14th, uh, we would open a discussion with the school committee about where we move forward from here in terms of uh, reopening a search, the timing, the all the issues that have been alluded to this evening that we could have a discussion um, and that that would be part of, a, of an agenda, a posted agenda to talk about those things. But just logistics wise, I just, um, uh, unless somebody sees it differently, I would, I would be calling Joe Wood tonight to let him know the results so that he could communicate to all three candidates tonight yes. because they know that we're voting tonight. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, definitely. Mrs. Minnick. As long as I'm um, issuing my gratitude to people, I think we should also thank the screening committee that spent time going through all of the applications and interviewing the candidates and that presented us with these three. Clearly they are, as we've said, very strong, talented educators um, who, will, I, who hopefully will go far in their field. But um, it, the, the time and effort spent by the screening committee is, is very valuable and appreciated. I second that sentiment. I, I agree, and thank you, Ms. Minnick, and thank yeah. you to those uh, members of the community and staff uh, who served, and um, hopefully some or, or many of them may be willing to continue to serve if there's a future search. And, um, and just because you leave the school committee doesn't mean you're not eligible to serve. <laughs> so I just wanted to throw that out there as a, as a general idea. Um, so. Motion to it. Adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The special meeting is adjourned.